So yesterday we studied the equations of a frictionless spring mass system and we applied these equations to different examples. With Maple we were able to symbolically find the equations and use visualization tools to explore the response of different systems depending on the parameters. Today we will look at two applications. First, the effect of gravity on a spring mass system. And then we will look at a spring pendulum. When we have the equations of a simple system like we had yesterday, um, then it's easy to use them for different type of system. Any other system that will result in a differential equation of motion in the same form as yesterday will show a response similar to the response of a spring mass system. These three um, examples are um, examples of a single degree uh, of freedom system that will have the same form and similar response as yesterday. So here are first we have the spring mass system that we've seen with the differential equation and here um, the equation for the natural frequency where in the spring mass system we were looking at the mass, the stiffness of the spring. In other um, system we will have different parameters. So here if we have this kind of system with a shaft and a disc, here we will be um, using parameters like torsional stiffness. We will look at the um, angular displacement and we will use also the moment of inertia and that's exactly these parameters that you can find here for the differential equation as well as um, in the frequency um, of the system. When we are working with a simple pendulum uh, we will want to take into consideration the gravity, the length of the pendulum L and the displacement theta as well. And same thing here, we can find these parameters in the differential equation and in the form of um, the equation of the natural frequency. And it's why the spring mass system model is a very commonly used one um, to study vibration. And it's also why many systems will be simplified and modeled using equivalent spring and mass. Today, in the first example, we want to answer um, a question that is very often asked um, how the gravity effect will affect the response of the system if the mass is hanging. So here we have a um, very similar system as yesterday, but it's uh, suspended vertically. So we have X. Um, which measure the vertical displacement with respect to the unstretched posi position. And we will define another variable, x prime, which measure the displacement with respect to the stretch equi equilibrium position. So here we have the x equal x prime plus the delta x. So then in the stretch equi equilibrium position, we can obtain this equation. And if we are substituting that uh, using the second law of Newton, we can get um, this equation describing the motion of the mass. It is in the same form as the equation of the motion from yesterday. And so here we can say that the vibration about the stretch equilibrium position will be identical to the vibration of a horizontal spring mass about the unstretched position. And of course here we are ignoring the friction. So the gravity won't have any effect here on this um, equation. Let's have a look at another example here, um, a spring pendulum. In this example, we have the pendulum that has the length L. It is connected to a spring with a stiffness K and we have an initial angular displacement theta. So here we can see the spring is halfway, halfway um, to the pendulum. 
So what we want to do here is to find the equation of the motion and the natural frequency of the system. And we also want to find the amplitude of the angular velocity. We have few initial parameters that are given. So here the mass of the pendulum is two kilogram. We also know the length and the stiffness of the spring. So here, first for our analytical solution, we can define first our parameters. So the mass, the length, the stiffness of the, of the spring. We know here gravity and um, initial um, displacement and um, frequency. Since the angle is very small, we can assume that the spring stretches and compresses in the horizontal direction only. So here, the force due to the spring will be written like that, f of k. We will take then the sum of the moments of the force about the pivot point, with here j being um, the moment of inertia of the pendulum. And if we compare this equation to the form of this equation of the spring mass um, that we've seen yesterday, we can conclude that the equation of the natural frequency will be of the following form. We know the parameters. So here we know the natural frequency. And once again, using the previous equation, we can then find the um, amplitude of the angular velocity, which is 0 0.82 radian per second. Now we can do the same thing with maple sim uh, with um, this simulation tool. Let's have a look. Maple sim is a multi-physics software and it's software based on Modelica components that will allow you to build some physical model of um, this kind of systems, for example. So here we will use component to describe the system, so the pendulum and the spring. And we'll be able to add the parameters. So here we have the spring and we also have some visualization component as well as for the pendulum here. We will be able to add some probe to extract some results and some value of this system. So let's, um, we have a simulation. We run a simulation and then we get this. So we have the visualization as I told you. So here we can see the pendulum with the spring here at halfway through the pendulum and the mass at the bottom. But we also extract some data and you can see we have the probe, so theta, acceleration and um, frequency. And if, if we have a look at the uh, plot here for the frequency, we can see we are at eight, um, 0 0.8 something uh, like we found in the previous um, analytical um, study of, of this system. So with Maple, we were able to um, describe the equations, do some analytical analysis. And then with Maple Sim, we've, we've been able to uh, look at simulation results using physical components and compare the results between Maple and Maple Sim.